Toro blades, Toro reel mowers, and Jacobson, they adjust the front roller. So if I want to change the height of cut on a Jacobson or a Toro, I remove the front roller up or down. If I'm trying to get a really tall height of cut with one of those, what I have to do is move the front of that reel really high. That's going to move this bed knife really close to the center line, and I'm not going to have a very aggressive uh, okay. My raking is not going to take place. I'm not going to reach into the grass and lift it up. If you look at uh, John Deere's green smallers, the adjuster roller is in the back. They want to make sure that you either have this flat, or if you're going to change to a higher height of cut, they're going to actually lift this blade up and change the attack angle so it's always up or flat. You can actually get these two machines to run with an upward attitude on this bed knife. And this attitude is this angle that we're talking about here. And you don't want an upward angle. You always want it to be down or level. And so that's one thing you have to be careful about. If I'm trying to get way too high of a height of cut out of one of these or this Greens King 4s, I can actually get an objectable height of, uh, quality of cut even with a really good blade. And so be careful with that. ESP, this is John Deere's reels, stands for extra strength or precision. This is their big heavy duty cutting unit. And they talk a lot about strength, toughness, brittle, fatigue strength. Is there a difference between a John Deere reel and a Toro reel and an R&R &R reel? Has anybody ever talked to someone about the quality of reels as far as aftermarket versus OEM? And what was their preference? Which was cheaper. Which was cheaper? R&R &R &R is usually cheaper. That I agree with. Has anybody else ever played with the different brands? I've actually visited quite a few different technicians about this particular subject, and I have people that have ran side by side the two reels. And what they've found is the consistency of R&R, &R, reel and bed knives, is relatively inconsistent. Sometimes the reels are soft and sometimes they're hard. And most OEM manufacturers have a relatively consistent reel and bed knife. Most manufacturers want the reel to be harder than the bed knife. If one part's going to wear out, which one is the easiest to change? The bed knife. The bed knife. So I want the bed knife to wear out, not the reel. R&R &R products, the reel tends to be softer than the bed knife. And so either the bed knife breaks or the reel wears out sooner. And R&R &R products tend to be cheaper. The people that I have met that have run them side by side say that an R&R an &R product will wear out faster than an OEM. So even though they're cheaper initially, if you plot the amount of money you spend over a five-year period, you're going to spend the same amount of money on product on parts like reels and bed knives, the difference is going to be labor. If I've got to change the reel or the bed knife more often, then I'm actually losing money in the long run. And so even though they've saved it up front, they're losing money in the long run. So I tend to kind of shy away from the reel and bed knife products from R&R, &R, but bearings, bearings all come from the same place. They tend to be cheaper, and so there are certain things you can get cheaper and get away with, and there are certain things that you might want to be careful about. I'm not going to say it's completely true. If you question it, you'd want to run it, experiment yourself. Take a machine, put an R&R &R product reel on one, put an OEM on the other, and test them yourself. Which one lasts longer, and which one costs money, more money over time? So those are some things that I've learned some of the things that you might want to play with and test. <clears throat> and that's what John Deere's done is they're trying to find that balance between too tough and too brittle. If you get a piece of metal too hard, it becomes brittle. When you hit a stick, it breaks it. If it's too soft, then it bends. And this example of a bending product, that's a little bit of an extreme case of hitting something. And there are going to be a couple pictures here of a heat treating process. If you get it too hard, it becomes long grain like this, which makes it brittle. 
Uh, medium carbon looks like this. This one here is very erratic, fracture. This here is what they're trying to get. They want real small lines. This is not going to shatter. So they've eliminated the lines, and the lines are fracture points. And so this is what they're looking for on their, on their heat treating process. They don't want it to be too soft, and they don't want it to be too hard. I don't know who brand X is and brand Y is, but brittle. You don't want your reel to be brittle, and you don't want it to be soft. You want it to be right in here. And so these are tests that they ran, so I'm not going to.